G'day YouTube, welcome back to Clooney Garage, Fred here. Uh, one of the big questions we've got about our VF Commodore is what sort of power levels did we, uh, of the journey we went on and what sort of power levels did we get to at each stage. So in today's video we're going to show where we started out with the base L77 and all the different mods we did and what power levels we got all the way, all backed up by dyno sheets. Stick with us, it's going to be a great video. Our VF is a Series 1 and it was built in 2015 and it was getting towards the end of the L77, the 6 litre with the uh, AFM DOD kit on it. Um, have a look at the build plate here so you can see, see exactly where we started from. So you can see down here on the compliance plate, it's an L77, March 2015. And I think the Series 2s started coming out with the, um, the LS3 uh, 6.2 litre. Um, we were, I, just, I was just lucky enough to get a run out on one of the last Series 1s and that's why we picked up this car. Alright, so the base model uh, L77, they, the manufacturer's claim is a 6 litre and they're saying that you know it's about 270 kilowatts. This is a manual. I think the uh, autos are also um, a, a little bit down on power as well. Uh, but have a look at the first dyno run. So that's totally normally aspirated stock. So that's 216 kilowatts at the rear wheels. So that probably... That makes a bit of sense because you get about 30% drivetrain loss through the gearbox and the diff and obviously the way you strap the car down on the dyno and tyre pressures. So, you know, 216 at the tyres was our starting point. All right, so step one, at Clooney Garage, we don't leave anything stock. And uh, before I actually picked the car up from the dealer, um, they had a special going and that was this Walkinshaw 310 pack. And I knew there were more things to come, but in a 310 pack, we'll show you a look, you get... 310 is a you know is a marketing term for bumping up the power to 310 kilowatts, but you get some pretty nice De Filippo ceramic coated headers with um, high flow cats. Um, you get twin two and a half inch uh, De Filippo exhaust. Uh, you get a cold air intake, which I've retained, which is still on here. Um, you get an ECU map and a tune, uh, and you get some really uh, highly effectual build plate uh, tags and. Uh, a, some little badges on the back, but ours soon disappeared. But let's have a look at the power level. So 310 at the motor, that translated to 244. All right, at Clooney Garage, we're always striving for a bit more power. And uh, it wasn't long before I got itchy feet. And um, I went for a drive in a LSA powered VF, and that just that blew me away. And I just, I just had to get a, uh, a blown supercharger on this, on this VF. And I had a couple of options. I could have gone a crate LSA, um, but at the time, Harrop um, were building a, a bigger kit, a 2300 positive displacement supercharger. Uh, the technology was uh, FDFI, so front drive force induction. Um, some of their earlier superchargers had the pulley at the back. Uh, so I decided to go and get one. Now, it's a little bit similar to this one, but it was a 2300 Harrop supercharger. And um, that was a lot of fun. But... This is obviously the, the latest one we've got on Clooney, but it looked exactly the same. Um, so I ran pretty conservative boost. Um, we kept the same headers from the 310 pack, the same exhaust. Um, yeah, so we, and obviously the over the air intake didn't change the throttle body. Um, and so the power levels on that little uplift went up to 402.9, so call it 403 rear wheel kilowatts. So we were pretty happy with that. That was a that was a big step up for Clooney at the time, um, and it was a lot of fun with the supercharger. Again, pretty conservative boost, and we could have easily have thrown a bit more timing and been a bit more aggressive on the boost on this thing, noting that it's still running normally aspirated pistons and the standard compression. Um, but we were pretty happy with that, and that was a hell of a lot of fun. All right, so I got about a hundred thousand kilometres on the original L77 with the 2300 supercharger. And it was a lot of fun, but I heard um, the lifters were starting to make a noise and um, it really was time for a freshen up. So at the time I was going, do I go with a camshaft? Do I do a rebuild? Do I do a built L77 motor, um, you know, with forged pistons and, and, you know, all the works and use my uh, 2300 blower? Um, but an opportunity presented itself um, at our local tune shop at Gentech and they actually had a crate motor W427. So for those of you that know your cars, the W427 was a limited run um, model in the VEs and in Australia um, that they were released in 2008 from memory but they had to have a bank of crate motors for warranty purposes 
and uh, Gentech managed to have a dedicated uh, crate motor, so I managed to buy that. That's a factory LS7, seven liter, 11 to one compression, all the fruit, beautiful heads. Um, it's, it's a work of art, the, the LS7. So I was gonna put the 2300 on that, but I decided not to, um, because at the time, Harrop were then going, the stepping up their blowers to a 2650. And at the time, come around here, at the time, we'll show you the power level in a second, but we went 2650, we went much bigger headers. I traded in the, the old headers. Um, we kept the over-the-air intake. I went up to 102 mil Nick Williams throttle body. The exhaust is a work of art. It's twin, three and a half inch, big boy, um, with a lot of knocked out sections. It's um, pretty raucous. Um, and then I decided at the same time as we're building this motor, let's put a big, you know, forced induction dedicated camshaft. So I went with a Brian Tooley stage four, had to get a custom ground at the speed shop in the US. Um, and that came back, that, that took, took about six months just for the cam to get built and, um, and obviously to get it back over here. So we did a whole bunch of other stuff, head studs and all this other stuff too, which I can take you through at another time. But then the power levels on the run in tune on a 40 degree day, very, very conservative just to baby this motor. So this was back in December 2018. We got up to 570, 571. And again, we were trying to throw some timing into it, but the air kept taking it out. So that was very conservative. Run it in, get a thousand kilometers into the motor, loosen it up a bit and see where we get to. Now where we're up to is we're um, going to throw more fuel at the car, more timing and so on. And we're going to be around that mid 600s territory at the moment. And um, when the whole uh, coronavirus situation calms down, we'll um, take you in and show you a real time run on that. So that's been our history. L77, 310 pack, supercharged L77, LS7, supercharged LS7. So you go from 200 kilowatts to 600 kilowatts plus at the tyres. And, um, and we're pretty happy. So hopefully that's given you a bit of data. It's all dyno sheets and backed up. You've heard what Clooney sounds like. And um, yeah, leave your comments below. If you've got any queries on those mods as where we've got to, you know, different things. And, and I can also, if you're really interested, I can, I can share what it costs and where to go to get it fixed. But check on Gentech's description below. They're an awesome speed shop and we're, we're super, happy, super happy with them.